Nosedive, a real but hyperbolic depiction of social media addiction. Season 3, episode 1 of Black Mirror follows the story of a woman who wants to keep up with the Joneses. Lacey wants a bigger house, approval from her rich friends, and to be seen as someone of importance. In fact, it's not even by her own volition that she craves these things. It is a side effect of terminal social media use and self-comparison. The set of this episode is stylized with a 1950s suburban aesthetic. It's clean and bright with desaturated pastel colors that makes everything seem a bit too polished. It indicates bliss, a world free of problems, a fake veneer to match everyone's inauthentic self. A social media rating system rules this landscape. It's eerily similar to Uber's five-star rating system, where both passenger and driver rate each other after a ride. In this case, every social interaction equals a rating. Someone looked at you funny? Low rating. The barista made your cappuccino extra tasty? High rating. Even more dystopian, you rate each other to their face and get immediate feedback based on your actions or their subjective opinion. In this world, people are constantly judged and categorized based on their ratings. For example, if you have a high rating, you have access to certain perks like discounts on housing and luxury seating on planes, things that those lowly rated peasants can only dream of. And if you're unfortunate enough to have a low rating, people will pretend not to look at you and be reluctant to give you any attention. There are even social media analytic experts that offer you solutions on how to boost your score so that you too can live like the elites. Anything in the fours is good, but 4.2 and above is really where you want to be to reap the benefits of high society. Lacey toes the line of these high rating scores until, you guessed it, she takes a nosedive. A snowball effect of negative social interactions that effectively exiles her from society. In this case, it's the protagonist's worst nightmare. This arbitrary rating system should remind you of the credit score system. If you have a low score, you can't get approved for loans or have access to the resources you would need to even have the same opportunities as people with high scores. And in the same way, this system is rigged against you. Life events and unlucky circumstances can happen at any moment and throw you off track. These experiences are oftentimes unavoidable and out of your control. For the majority of people, social media is an extension of oneself. If you have a weird social media presence, you fundamentally are weak. Weird, right? Green versus blue text bubbles, the amount of likes you get, the amount of followers you have, blue check marks. These are all nonsensical components that play into the greater machine of our technological society and how we view others. In typical Black Mirror fashion, this episode portrays an exacerbation of very real consequences of social media addiction and what that means for society. This episode's narrative was so influential that it was responsible for the CEO of Instagram to implement hiding likes on their platform. We get a sense of Lacey's socially conditioned trauma when she practices her fake laugh in front of a mirror because she's scared her real laugh is ugly. And throughout this episode, we hear this nightmarish laugh in an attempt to fit in. This theme serves as a constant reminder that Lacey is pretending to be someone that she's not. Lacey longs to be accepted to the in crowd, except not for who she is. Rather, a version of herself whose shit doesn't stink, prim, proper, and plastic. We see her addiction to social media manifest itself in the phone eats first phenomenon, a practice of taking pictures of your food before you eat it, or not being able to chow down and enjoy your food because you're too worried about taking pictures of it. This stems into a much larger conversation that I would argue is the antidote to the dystopia, presence. Simply being present and being aware of the moment that you're in is the best thing you can do for your mental health when it comes to social media. The funniest part about this scene is that she doesn't even like the food. However, she loves the positive attention she gets from her post about it. Social media acts as a replacement for personality in shallow people. Go on Instagram and look up the name of your local, overpriced, chuggy bar or nightclub. You'll see what I mean real quick in the tagged pictures. To these people, looking the part is all they need to feel validated. Likes, comments, and engagement 
feed their fragile egos like a starving beast. Undeniably, there are nuances within social media apps that people are subconsciously aware of, and they allow them to dictate how they act on social media. The clothes that you wear, even the sizes, the food that you eat, the places that you visit, the cars you drive, the job you have, the people you associate with, the followers you have, the shows you watch, the music you listen to. Everything is compartmentalized and consumed by others, and then shit out to form a baseline judgment on you. Even the mattress you sleep on. Which is why today's video is sponsored by Helix. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding, customized to fit your needs, conveniently shipped in a box right to your doorstep. But everybody's different, and Helix knows that. That's why they designed a sleep quiz that helps match your unique sleeping preferences with your body type. Based on your different sleeping positions and preferred mattress firmness, they have something for everyone. And if you happen to sleep with a partner or even a pet, you can take the quiz together and find the best compromise for all of you. I prefer a medium mattress feel and I tend to sleep on my side and stomach and I'm a giant human, so I went with the king size midnight Lux. You guys know that I've been sleeping on Helix mattresses for well over a year now and ever since I moved, I had to upgrade from a queen to a king. That's how much I love my Helix mattress. I'm able to fall asleep in a matter of minutes, and I wake up every morning feeling really refreshed. The best part about Helix is that your new mattress comes to you. Gone are the days of going to an old mattress store and having to sit through an annoying sales pitch that takes forever. I even had fun setting up my Helix. It took me just about five minutes to carry it up the stairs and watch my new bed spring to life. Helix Sleep also offers free shipping to anyone in the US, and they have a 100 night sleep trial. This gives you a little bit over three months to completely fall in love with your new mattress. And if you don't, they will come and pick it up for you, no questions asked, and you will get a full refund. Helix mattresses all come with a 10 year warranty, and they offer flexible payment plans and financing options. So a great night's sleep is never that far away. I love my Helix, and I think you would too. If you're in the need for a new bed, check out Helix. Go to helixsleep.com slash filion to get up to $200 off your new mattress plus two free pillows. And thank you to Helix for sponsoring this video. These types of socioeconomic ratings are built into our everyday life credit score, programs for people who pay premiums, lofty, comfortable accommodations for those deemed worthy enough, whether it be your social status or money in your bank account. In every aspect of our culture, people are ranked and organized in an invisible caste system. Lacey lets her one false idea of what it means to make it dictate every decision in her life. She has to attend her friend's wedding who treated her like shit because fours will be there. And she has to live in the rich neighborhood despite not being able to afford it. She changes her behavior to live in accordance with people she doesn't even like. This means losing any sense of self down to the way that she laughs and eats. The most primitive basic human experiences that make you, you. In a world where everyone is competing to be the same, being different is everything. Social comparison works in three ways, upward, lateral, and downward. Upward social comparison is when you rank yourself against other people that you deem are happier or more successful than you. The problem with this is that social media is an illusion. It is a highlight reel of someone's life that they want to portray as the real thing. It shouldn't surprise you that researchers have found that upward social comparison has been linked with decreased mood, depression, and a poor self-concept. It's the worst among adolescents, and it's more common with girls. The whole notion sounds self-evident, but nobody really takes it seriously. We see upward social comparison when Lacey idolizes mid to high fours. She puts on a fake smile and personality and even tries to win them over with gifts. She wants to buy a house she can't afford and assimilate with the aristocrats. In some regards, upward social comparison can motivate an individual to change, except in this dystopia, everyone is fake as fuck, so this aspect of upward social comparison doesn't really apply. After all, it's not like these are stand-up members of society that Lacey wants to emulate. They're pretentious NPCs. Lateral social comparison is when you rank yourself against people that are on your level. Usually, people associate with peers that are around the same age and share similar interests. We see a demonstration of lateral social comparison when Lacey is in her office gossiping to her coworker about Chester. 
Despite being a nice guy, he has a low rating based on factors out of his control. Downward social comparison happens when you rank yourself against people who are perceived to be inferior to you. It is a mechanism that is meant to boost your own self-esteem, and this episode demonstrates the problem with downward social comparisons. A character is introduced with a rating of 1.4 that used to be a 4.6. She has since renounced her high-class snobby lifestyle for a more raw and real-life experience. She is wiser and more free than Lacey ever hopes to be. Throughout the episode, Lacey also demonstrates a downward social comparison with her brother. She sees him as a deadbeat slob, someone who plays video games all day and doesn't strive to be greater. His score is in the threes, but he doesn't care. He's actually happy. Social media is nothing to him and everything to her. He acts in accordance with his beliefs, whereas she doesn't. Her brother pokes holes in Lacey's upward and downward social comparisons. She is constantly pretending to be something she's not, and using him as a way to feel better about herself. Meanwhile, her brother is just his true self. As a result, we see her cognitive dissonance boil up, as her rating continues to nosedive. And all of this comes to a head in the final third act. Lacey's initial plan was to deliver a tone-deaf speech about getting caught up in the little things, like social media, at her childhood best friend or bully's wedding. We learn that Naomi only wanted her there because she was a 4.2, before nosediving trying to get there, and it would appear humble to the high fours. Lacey was also eager to dismiss all of the abuse from Naomi over the years because she saw the event from a socially opportunistic perspective. This highlights one's willingness to forget about the negative side of people when you have something to gain. It isn't until Lacey gives an explosive speech at the wedding where she snaps back to reality, metaphorically escaping her mental prison while being thrown into a physical one. Except she's never been more free. Fuck you! Fuck you next Wednesday. Fuck you for Christmas. Fuck you! Yeah!